Hey everybody, I'm SystemCheck66 and this is going to be my rapid fire uh, Vanquish Bayonetta PS4 collection review or 10th anniversary review. Uh, it's going to be just off the top of my head, I'm going to fire out about the gameplay, uh, the graphics, what the remasters are like, etc, etc. So let's first start with Vanquish, a really, really competent action game. It is directed by Shinji Mikami, who is the brainchild behind the Resident Evil series and uh, Resident Evil, Resident Evil Remake. And also Resident Evil 4's director, main director. Shinji Mikami is one of those people that can't really do too much wrong. Um, he created the Evil Within, God Hand, uh, Okami I believe. So many different games and different genres that he has dipped his hand into. I think survival horror is his uh, forte. But when it comes to a game like Vanquish, uh, this new action, Gears of War, third person shooter style action game but with a twist... He really hit it out of the park, I've got to be honest. So first, first gameplay. What's the gameplay like? Why is this game any different from your Uncharted's, your Gears of Wars, your Resident Evil 4's, 5's, etc, etc? Well, because one, it controls so damn well. It's fluid. The the PS4 version, I've got the PS3 version, but the PS, I remember that playing perfectly fine. But the PS4 version uh, runs so smoothly and all the action is so smooth, you know, when it's all happening on the screen. Both Bayonetta and Vanquish run at 60 frames per second on the PS4, whereas Vanquish only ran at 30 frames per second on the PS3. This helps massively and greatly. Uh, it is a fast game to begin with. It's a crazy fucking action game. Let me just say that there's a lot happening on the screen at one time, a lot of enemies to, to fend off, and also the main gameplay gimmick of this this action title is that you can boost around the levels, you know, at high octane speeds. It's the sort of game we're talking about. It doesn't really do it justice or give it its props. You kind of have to play the game for yourself to understand how everything works and melds together. The boss battles are intense. Sometimes you fight two bosses at one time. They're transforming into, into different things. Uh, there's explosions happening all over the place. And all the while, Sam Gideon, your main sort of protagonist, the character you're playing as, is zipping around the level, you know, with these boosters on his uh, suit. So, let's get down to the, the gameplay. The gameplay consists of you sort of third-person shooting enemies like robots, basically Russian sort of robots that Russia are deploying to attack uh, this space station that's owned and run by America. Uh, it's a US space station. You play Sam Gideon, and he is a member of DARPA, and he's equipped with this this high-tech uh, experimental suit that has like a core yeah, attached to it. And this core can basically allow Sam to take a lot of punishment, uh, a lot of hits before it overheats, and then it can, you know, recharge itself. Uh, it's like, obviously, armor. The caveat to that being that you have to let the, the core recharge, you know, if you take enough hits and uh, and then your armor will, will build, build back up, recharge. Um, so you also have these boosters and it allows Sam to just fucking boost around, like I said, to boost around the level, uh, whether it be sort of sideways, forwards, back. And when you try and shoot enemies and stuff while boosting or you do a roll, you can also do dodge rolls. Very, very cool character to control and, and very flexible in the way that you can just pull off these different moves and stuff. Um, so when you're you're boosting, if you boost like backwards, forwards, and you're going towards an enemy and you start shooting them, uh, time will slow down. You also get like bullet time in this game as well. And I think that's uh, another gimmick that the suit employs for Sam. So he can slow down time, everything slows down and he can react accordingly. Um, and then if you, you kind of roll sideways, forwards, backwards, and uh, you you hold down the X button, I believe, then it will slow down time again, and you can kind of pinpoint shoot like enemies and stuff. Uh, like I said, this is a very hard game to kind of talk about because it's so different, and it was so different for the time. It's definitely an underrated classic, in my opinion, underrated gem, and it controls amazingly. It controls so smoothly, and all the action moments and stuff, they're so fun. Like, that's the thing. The gameplay, the core gameplay, the level design, um, the voice acting, you know, for Sam, it's cheesy, but I love it that way. It's like this 80s action sort of dialogue, and um, I love it. Sam Gideon, he, like, smokes like a trooper. You can, like, light a cigarette and flick it, 
And I didn't do this when I was playing the game. Even when I played it on the PS3, I've got my PS3 version. I, I didn't even realize you could do this. But when you you flick the cigarette, it can um, attract enemies and confuse them, and they go over to see what what's going on. You know what it is, and then you can you can take them out. But that's the type of thing the gameplay employs is just this ultra cool style. It's an ultra cool style. It's like the first time any of you guys, myself included, played DMC, played the first Devil May Cry, or played Resident Evil Four, or you know, Mikami is always like up in up in the ante when it comes to what he can do and how different he can make uh, a game based in a genre that we're we're too familiar with. And I think Vanquish just stands head and shoulders above a lot of a lot of the uh, the third person shooters that came out at that time. Is it still an amazing game on the PS4? Yes, it's even better. I will say it's even better. Um, there's also a great move that you can pull off. It's like an insta kill type of move. Uh, or it takes away a lot of the, the enemy's health. And uh, that comes with a caveat as well. We'll get onto that. But basically, you can um, you can either just box the absolute shit out of an enemy. Yeah. And then your core will, will need to recharge. So basically, the caveat is once you use this move that takes away a lot of a lot of health from an enemy or destroys like a, a standard enemy like in one hit, um, the suit will need to recharge. So you're kind of open for attack there, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's great. Like, he'll... He'll like kick off of an enemy and, and do his backflip kick. Incredible, yeah? When you hide behind cover, you can actually hop over the cover and slow down time and shoot the enemies. And kind of reminds me of the same thing you can do in uh, Sleeping Dogs. You can do the same thing where you hop from out of cover and you slow down time and you can take out enemies. So, you know, it's all very, very cool. Uh, I think Sleeping Dogs came out after it. So they kind of borrowed that from Vanquish. And I am quite surprised because the only thing that I think has borrowed from Vanquish has been a, a movie, a movie from Neil Blomkamp called uh, Elysium. You might have heard of it. It's his second film to uh, District District Nine. Both incredible films. I really like Elysium and District Nine. Uh, but they borrowed a lot and quite heavily from Vanquish. And if you go and watch that film, I won't say what happens and stuff, but you'll see Jodie Foster's character uh, matches up with the president in this in this game. And um, yeah, a lot of the story beats and stuff, it, it borrows quite heavily from Vanquish. I'll just say that. Uh, so other than that, though, not a lot of other games have really borrowed too much from Vanquish. Probably because Vanquish is still a third-person shooter at, at its heart, at its core. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a third-person shooter that, that does things differently. You know, it just ups the ante. So along with the melee combat, you know, and, and these special moves that you can pull off, um, how do you fight these these enemies, these robotic enemies? Uh, you basically pick up a number of guns, really, really cool weapons. Um, how they change and stuff is, is still, to this day, very, very cool. So, you know, they'll just kind of like... I'm trying to think now, like, I kind of... Anyway, I say this is going to sound rubbish, but it's not. Bear with me. So you know how Michael Bay's Transformers kind of just... They transformed, right? Imagine that, but with a gun and it looking cooler. Yeah, way better. Okay, so that's kind of how your guns transform from one to another. It's a very, very cool, slick-looking uh, animation and stuff that plays out. And, um, yeah, you get some amazing weapons. Some really, really fun weapons. You get your rocket launchers. You get your, your three different types of machine guns, maybe more. You get your shotgun. Uh, this really cool armor-piercing pistol. Uh, sniper rifles. You name it, you get it. Then you get these other things like the life gun, which fires this big sort of orb, this... this this beam orb at enemies and, and takes them down. It's like, uh, and then you get this this uh, rocket launcher that fires like multiple rockets that can lock onto enemies. Great weapon selection. Great weapon selection. And you can fire each one of these weapons in slow mo or when you're zipping around the level. It they work so well in tandem with the gameplay structure and and the way the game sort of mechanics work. They work so well. You want to lock onto enemies as you're sliding around in slow mo. You can do it, and it looks cool as fuck. This game is all about style and, and looking like a badass. And if that's what you're after and that's what you want from your games, pff, you're going to be very, very happy with this game. It just seems like Shinji Mikami had created games like God Hand and Resident Evil 4 and, you know, and worked on Shadows of the Damned. I don't know if that came out after Vanquish or Vanquish was before it, I'm not too sure. But he'd worked on these games that were... You know, they were mechanically sound, but they were always a bit sluggish, let's be honest, okay? And he went, I don't want to make another sluggish style action game. I want to make something that's blisteringly fast and lets you take enemies out of one fell swoop 
and then keep zipping around the level. I want to make an action game that's fucking fast, yeah? Because let's be honest, a lot of the action games up until that point were quite sluggish. They're fairly slow in some ways, yeah? Uh, with your character and how they move and stuff, even Uncharted. But Shinji Mikami was like, nah, I'm going to do something different. You know, we're going to combine, like, that, that crisp, fast gameplay of Devil May Cry with an action shooter. And that's what you get. You get Vanquish. When aiming down your sights, the accuracy is on point in this game. Like, you can literally take take off enemies' heads, uh, dispatch them very quickly. In terms of actually controlling Sam Gideon, it's, it's smooth as butter. It's perfectly fine. Like, it's really, really, really quick and fast-paced, but the accuracy is on point. Like, if you want to pinpoint an enemy's head and take him out, you know, zoom in with a sniper rifle and take him out. Is perfect there's a few qte sort of segments in the game they don't last very long they're they're quite easy to get through they're not complicated in any way uh yeah and they don't overstay their welcome they're a great addition to gameplay um most action games you know uh, in this generation and previous generations uh have used qtes and they they do it perfectly fine all the good ones and this game's no different it's perfectly fine there's a really good one actually where you fight you fight this boss uh, and you just sort of like smash the the square button very simple simplistic stuff but the actual like the visuals on screen at the time when you're just you know basically uh, blocking his sword and stuff like that and, and sort of going at it with him uh, it looks incredible yeah and it's still allowing you to kind of interact but the game the game mostly lets you play it like it's not just a huge QTE like Resident Evil 6 or you know some some parts of Shenmue um, yeah, so they work very well. They work perfectly fine. And I would expect nothing less from a game that's, you know, previous generation to, to this generation. Uh, all games did that last generation. And they kind of they kind of stopped doing it this generation. All the new IPs and stuff that came out. But you still get those QTE sort of, you know, segments in games. And they're not intrusive to gameplay and they're not oppressive either. So they're, they're cool uh boss battles the boss battles are really really good like they're, they're pretty incredible to be honest you fight these these titans called the Argus's, these huge spider bots that then change into these big walking mech style bots and like the way that that sam takes them out sometimes is just it's it's so fucking stylish and so cool um there's like one, he basically jumps in the air and he corkscrew spins, and this this activates a QTE. You know, he corkscrew spins and he goes through the actual robot. He goes through the mech, and it's just stuff like that where it's still cool to this day. And I'm still sitting there going, "That was fucking epic! Like that was badass! Like it's it's just it's off the wall." 80s action film mixed with sci-fi action third person shooting goodness that's all i can say the boss battles are so fucking fun like there's certain segments in the game like one in a tunnel where you fight these these octo things these fucking octo mechs they're like squid mechs and you got to stop them from blowing up your you know your uh, your squad's like apc yeah this game's version of an apc and it's like dimly lit and when you shoot them enough times they turn red all the eyes and stuff turn red it's so it's so well done they're not exactly bosses themselves but you know it's just uh, it's just cool it mixes things up it changes the the gameplay a bit it it keeps everything entertaining and fresh and new and this game is always coming up with something fresh and new in every act that you go through you know so it's not a long game I will say that it's it's a short game but it's short but sweet you know you have your short but sweet games that are really replayable and vanquish sits in that category where i can play it over and over again i've played it twice on the ps3 maybe three times and then i come over to the ps4 play it again still enjoy it now uh i'm trying to think we're, we're gonna obviously we're gonna get eventually get to the bad points about the game there's not many i must say uh but the good points what else are there okay so enemy designs and enemies in general are pretty cool like the foot soldier type enemies stuff like that the bigger ones the the medium tier ones you get uh things that range from red type type sort of foot soldier robots um to these big ones that have like canisters on their back that you can shoot to you know blow them up and stuff come with like rockets and, and all kinds of things like that to snipers and ones that can fly enemy designs cool they're all robotic on russia's side because they want to use these things to 
to fight their wars yeah, against the US, whereas the US soldiers are all human. Um, and it's cool. It kind of leads to to it not being a very gory game, I will say that. It, it does have some moments of gore in it, I, I will be honest. Like when some of the robots completely eviscerate uh, one of your squad members... You get to see it, like, just bits everywhere. But when taking on the, the robot enemies and stuff, obviously it's not gory. But it's still impressive when you blow off their head and there's, like, sparks and shit appearing. So, enemy designs are very cool. I feel like this game was what PNO 3 on the GameCube was trying to be. But this does it a whole, whole lot better. Enemy AI, it's okay. It's a bit of, uh, a bit of both, really. It's bad and it's good. You know, sometimes they are just standing there, like, a sitting duck and waiting for you to shoot them. Other times they do kind of advance and hide behind things. And I think it's more about the amount of enemies that come at you that, that makes the game, you know, harder and, and can lead to you getting swarmed, overrun, and then end up dead. But all in all, it's the enemy AI and stuff like that isn't bad. Um, but it's not amazing either. I have seen better in Gears of War or, you know, the later Uncharted games, even the original Half-Life. But the AI isn't that bad. It's... it's it's, you know, it's fine. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, enemy designs, like the weirder ones, it's the weirder enemy designs that, that crop up sort of like later on in the game that, that have been pressed. So you have this thing that's almost like an Anubis type robot um, and it can go on all fours and then it can stand up and it has this sort of like staff and, and it tries to like slice your head off. And then you get this this one enemy, it's got an insta-kill, it's like a one-hit kill, because Mikami loves having sort of enemies that can one-hit kill you, the Hunters from Resident Evil, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, and these things are pretty much, if they grab you, you're dead, one-hit kill. Some enemies can actually just, they, they can kill you in one, one hit. But this thing is like, it's basically a bunch of like robotic parts that build back together. And when you destroy them, they explode and stuff, there's this little like red orb type bot that runs off and it does this really com comedic run and you have to chase it it's really good like it's, it's stuff like that that it's little things like that that i uh that put a smile on my face that i think yeah like this this is great it's not too overdone it's still a very intimidating enemy to have to go up against like a sub boss uh, but when you destroy all all the parts or you, you know all the parts fall off of it and it starts doing this benny hill sketch run yeah, it's it's great. It's little little things like that that I think that's the that's the little Mikami touches. They're the little touches that really win through. The game's semi serious, like it's it's eighties cheese sci fi goofiness, but it can be quite serious at times. It does take itself seriously, but then you have moments like that where you think, Yeah, like he knows what he's making. Like, you know, the little Benny Hill robot stuff. Brilliant. Utter brilliance. And so it'll run around, you'll chase it and then you know, try and take off like uh, its health bar and things before it then reforms, you know, into the more intimidating version of itself. And it is fucking intimidating. Like, I I worked out, okay, because I'd forgot after the, the years, you know, from playing it on the PS3 to now, uh, don't roll back or try and roll forward or run into it or whatever, just roll sideways. Because that's outside of its striking distance. If it does, does get Sam, it stabs him and then lops his head off. So like I said... Don't think just because the little robots are running around and it's quite funny and amusing that this enemy is anything to to laugh at because it's not. It's a serious, serious fucking photo to go up against. It even has a moment where before you fight one of those things, uh, there's a bunch of like bots, just sort of normal like foot soldier Russian bots, and they're all dancing. Like, and there's this huge like ghetto blaster, they're all dancing around, and then once you destroy them, the actual ghetto blaster, like, this thing pops up. And, uh, and it tries to kill you. <laughs> Stuff like that that, yes, like, perfect, love it. Uh, so, like, levels, level designs, it all takes place on this, this huge orbit in space station uh, that the US own. The actual level designs themselves are, they're really cool. They're really cool. They still look good even now. Uh, the vistas and stuff, incredible to look at. The combat arenas where action takes place in perfectly sizable, you know, for you to move around in and stuff. It's a very linear game, same as Bayonetta. We'll get onto that in a minute. But um, but you still have this this room to move and and take out enemies and go from different positions to different positions and 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 handle combat how you want to handle it. So in that in that respect and that aspect, the levels are are wicked. They're sick. They, it's a very brightly lit game. Takes place mainly in the day, uh, a lot of it. The levels themselves are kind of 
sci-fi grey concrete stone mixed with sort of metal uh, but still very interesting and, and brightly lit and uh, and in they're just interesting to look at like it's it's hard to explain it's not like gears of war where it's all very darkly lit and just gray and same with resident evil 4 you know that era when all the action games that were coming out were sort of gray and you know some of them were like darkly lit well this isn't that like it's very brightly lit it takes place in the day most of it uh, there are obviously sections of the game later on that take place at night but everything's like brightly lit when you get to this certain sort of city area it's got like neon signs it's brightly lit there's like you know uh, bots just trying to snipe you things like that so it's yeah it's uh it's very gunmetal gray i will say that but brightly lit and then it has like these amazing vistas and it has uh, lakes and you go to like a forested area and there's all this see what i'm saying there's all this sort of different stuff as well it's not like like i said earlier it's not like pno3 where it's just fucking boring to look at and fucking boring to play and i'm sorry if you're a fan of that game but i remember playing the demo i think i might have even bought the game because it was mikami and uh and being like yeah this looks cool and then when i played it i was like i think i played it for like 30 minutes i was like this ain't for me uh so i feel like pno3 was him sort of testing the waters and that was the experimental game and this is basically what pno3 should have been and what he wanted it to be uh so even though it's got that gunmetal gray you know sci-fi concrete stone type of look to it uh, it's all very brightly lit and there's a lot going on in these levels that aren't just your typical military sci-fi shooter type locations stuff is going on in them they sync with and complement the style of game it is to what you'd expect the the level designs and stuff and what this space station should look like and then like i said the vistas when you're in these levels these environments and you've got you know concrete and stuff like that around you and these very factory style settings you'll look up and you'll see the the space station and how you know cylindrical it is and you can see places that you've been to before but you were like upside but you're looking at them and they're upside down it's great it's stuff like that it reminds me of it's definitely taken from like 2001 space odyssey with the spaceship how that guy is just walking around the spaceship and he's going upside down and then back to normal and upside down and it reminds me of the the ring world in halo as well you know where you look up and you can see the the rest of the ring stuff like that is very very cool that's what i'm saying it's very stylized don't think that i am this is a negative that i'm being negative about the the level designs because they all do what they're supposed to and look how they're supposed to how you how you'd expect you know this installation to look uh, but then it has all this other incredible stuff that really makes it stand out so level designs and their particular art style are all on point perfect ain't got no problems i think to end off before we get on some of the bad points i'd talk about the sound design and also just the graphics what the graphics like they still look good in 2021 from a 2010 game they still look good that's all i can say play the game you're going to be impressed it looks good and it almost seems like it was made not on a, a particularly small budget, but still a budgeted style title. But that doesn't come through when you're playing the game. It doesn't come through um, when you're experiencing this game. It feels like a big budget title that was made on a budget. The graphics are perfect. They're perfect. I love the graphics of this game. Uh, sound design. It's got a great soundtrack. There's some really cool sort of like tracks that play as you're in the thicker combat. And, you know sort of like in the slower quieter moments it, it breaks it up uh yeah the the soundtrack is is really good it's this you know it's this typical kind of sci-fi uh dance techy sounding sort of tracks that's that's what the the game incorporates uh into its soundtrack and they're perfectly serviceable like it's a cool soundtrack it gets your blood pumping it's like devil may cry you know when the when the tracks played during uh action segments in devil may cry and how everything kind of mesh together and stuff like yeah it's it's a good soundtrack like perfectly fine and it it complements the action a bit like doom eternal soundtrack it complements the action when things are ramping up and it gets your your heart racing and your blood pumping so great soundtrack perfectly fine not not one track that i was like oh don't like that like everything was was great and just it all meshes together it's a package that all fits together and melds together perfectly that's the thing it's such a complete package 
That's what I like about it. So, they're the good things. This is supposed to be a rapid fire review. I'm guessing it might not be. It's going to about 30 minutes. But the, the truth is, I'm not going to spend as much time on Bear now. I mainly got this 10th anniversary collection for Vanquish. And Bayonetta just happens to be on the disc with it. Uh, so, bad points. Okay, so... There's times when the game slows down and it's really annoying. Like, you're going to this first-person view and it's from Sam's, like, visor and uh, you have all your squad mates and stuff because you spend most of the game with a squad of Marines and uh, you're always quipping with this guy called Burns who reminded me of, like, a alternate reality version of Barry Burton. I don't know why, he just does. But, um, yeah, you're always quipping and having these... Uh, and throwing insults and having sort of these little arguments with Burns. And when you're in the first person sort of viewpoint, you're walking through these locations, it slows the game down like to such a stupid pace, like to a crawl. And I could have done without those, I've got to be honest. Uh, yeah, so, and another problem with that is, unfortunately, like I said, this is a game that feels big budget, but was probably made on a lower budget. And that shows through uh, when characters are talking and you don't see their mouths moving and stuff. Sorry about that, I fucking live near the seaside. Loads of seagulls, but uh, yeah, anyway, continuing on. So yeah, you'll you'll be talking to Burns, you'll be talking, and you, you get like these little Metal Gear style codec cutscenes, and you might see him talking, his mouth moving, but when you actually see him from the visor, his mouth isn't moving. All the characters that talk, and you can see them through your visor in this first person viewpoint, their mouths don't move. And so it, that's where it starts to feel a little low budget. They could have at least, you know, put an animation in to, to make their mouths move, even if it's just a little minor animation it still would have worked better than not seeing them actually talking now the biggest issue i have with this game and it's such a sad one is i don't care about the story i don't think the story is that great in this it, it really isn't it's more about getting into the action and playing the game that stuff is great that's 10 out of 10 but when it comes to the story i just don't feel that i'm invested in it i just i'm not invested in the story uh, i've watched it a total of two times i played the game on ps3 the third time, I kind of had it in the background, you know, I just wasn't really paying attention. And this time, when, I'm, when I've when i played it on the PS4, I end up skipping a lot of them. It's only the, the ones that have the, the action scenes and stuff in it that I, I stayed and watched. Uh, the other ones where they're just talking, it's him and Burns, I skipped it. I've got to be honest with you. So the story is very bare bones, very basic, very simple. The type of game it is, it doesn't bother me, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm not really playing the game for the story. It's not a bad story, it's just not incredible in any way. Uh, it's literally, Sam is, you know, with DARPA, he gets this, this experimental suit, he works alongside these marines. I don't want to ruin the story for you guys, you know, if you, you do end up like loving the story, and if you haven't played this game, but uh, yeah, it's got some great twists and stuff. Definitely has some good, tw it has a good twist, I will say towards the the later part of the game the later half of the game towards the end um that's it really it's just sam with a squad of marines he's got this uh, i forget what her name is but there's this woman that is on this spaceship this darpa owned spaceship and she helps sam you know during the course of the game she is what mailing is to snake in the metal gear series or what hunnigan is to leon in resident evil 4 she's there to to help you out you know through these codec like calls and things like that um, so she doesn't do much. She just stays in this spaceship above, like, the, the space station and offers help and advice. Uh, and yeah, Burns as a character, he's cool. I like Burns as a character. He's cool. The, the quips and the arguing and stuff and the, the back and forth between him and Sam are really cool. Sam's a cool character. I like Sam. He's a badass. He's your typical Mikami-style protagonist, a bit like Chris Redfield. Or Sebastian Castellanos from Evil Within. You know, that sort of style protagonist. He's, he's just ultra cool masculine don't take no shit from nobody type of protagonist that smokes like a trooper and he knows how to just backflip off like a droid's fucking head you know and then corpse could kick a fucking boss <laughs> and go through it um that's the star protagonist he is it's more really about the suit and how he he uses the suit and how it makes him this cool character so the main antagonist of the story is victor zaitsev and he basically leads the, the russian military who leads you know the uh the attack on this uh, this colony, this space colony, and that's when Sam and the Marines get involved, and that's really it. That's the the bare bones. That's the basics of the story. The president of the colony or United States, I can't actually remember. Um, she she's a bit dodgy. 
there's a few sneaky moves happening, you know, and some stuff behind the scenes in the background that Sam and the, the Marines aren't privy to. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Like, the story is bare bones basic, it, and it works simply to move one action set piece to the next action set piece. And that's what it's there for, if I'm being honest. And I think Mikami knows that as well as the team at Platinum Games. Uh, I forgot to mention, this is obviously a Platinum Games produced game, developed game. And it still has that seal of quality that they're known for. I think it's up there with Metal Gear Rising and Near Automata for me, personally. Uh, it's one of the better Platinum games. I think this is probably like, I think next to Near and, and Metal Gear Rising. I might even like this more than Metal Gear Rising, just a bit. Because there's, there's other hack and slash games I prefer over Metal Gear Rising, like Ninja Gaiden or uh, Devil May Cry. But yeah, this is definitely in that top three. Like, it's probably my second favourite next to Near. And the Metal Gear Rising. So very, very competent, very well developed, produced Platinum Games game. And tons of fun to play. You know, you don't have to pay attention to that story. You really don't. I don't and I still love the game to bits. Still enjoy the hell out of it. There's plenty of games I do that with where I'm just like, eh, the story is not that great. Ninja Gaiden is one of those games. I don't think the story is that great, although I do prefer it over this. Um, I would even so, go so far as to say that Ninja Gaiden 2's story is better than Vanquish's. There's a lot of stories and a lot of plots that are better than Vanquish. I've got to be honest, this this game's plot and story does fall short. Um, if it had a better story, a better plot, you know, just something more interesting, that's what I'm trying to say, not so vanilla, then I think this game would be a 10 out of 10. Yeah, big time. Um, a lot of people might complain about the length of the game. I think it's short but sweet, but it is a short game, so just know that. That's kind of why it comes bundled with a game like Bayonetta because it's a short game. And the only extras that I found that I can think of that I'm privy to and aware of is the mini arena battle games that you unlock afterwards or during gameplay. And that's just waves of enemies coming after you and you know you getting the best rank and score. Uh, it's basically mercenaries, but Vanquish's take on mercenaries. That's what it is. So yeah, that's the only stuff that I could think of in terms of extras. Maybe there was some concept art, some making of videos. I can't, I can't remember. But the the base game itself is is the thing that draws me in and the thing that I, I love playing and enjoy playing. Um, even if the story is, like I said, just a bit bare bones and vanilla. So yeah, the game's great. Like I can't recommend this enough for third person action shooter fans, fans of Shinji Mikami. And just fans of wacky, off-the-wall Japanese, you know, action games in general. Definitely get this. If you're a Platinum Games fan, get this one. This needs to be added to your collection if you haven't played it previously. Uh, it's definitely a 9 out of 10. This is a 9 out of 10 action game. Highly underrated and a bit of a cult classic now, I would say. Although, I don't know. I think it moved past that cult classic status. But yeah, I personally think cult classic, highly underrated... It's a must for anyone that's an anime fan. They love their sci-fi. Just, it's off the wall. And I love it all the more for that. Like, it's great. You know what Platinum Games are like? Their games are always off the wall, but they always back it up with the gameplay. Nine times out of ten, they back it up with, with interesting and different, unique, you know, gameplay. So, yeah. Nine out of ten. Now we're going to move on to Bayonetta. And this is going to be a bit controversial if you're a huge fan of the Bayonetta series and of the first game. So let's move on to Bayonetta, the, the other game in the bundle. The game that Vanquish comes bundled with, or if you're a Bayonetta fan, Vanquish comes bundled with Bayonetta. Do I like Bayonetta? That's what everybody wants to know, right? No, I don't. I've played this game a total of probably, I'd say five times, this being the fifth time. And I just can't get into it. I don't know what it is. Uh, it is directed by Hideki Kamiya. He's made and directed two of my favourite games ever developed by Capcom. And that's Resident Evil 2, the original. That is like my favourite game of all time. And Devil May Cry, the first Devil May Cry. And there's a lot of DMC in Bayonetta. But unfortunately, Devil May Cry for me did it better. Also, we all know that Hideki Kamiya in real life is an arsehole. He's a massive arsehole. And I think that this game was him having free reign over everything. And a lot of people say it's tongue-in-cheek. There's so many references to like Resident Evil 4, you know, with uh, Rodan. Was it Rodin or whatever his name is, Rodan? Yeah, Rodan saying, oh, buddy, I buy it. He's like, I heard, heard that from someone once. That's great. That's all great and stuff. I love the, the callbacks, tongue-in-cheek, the full-full breaking, you know, all that stuff. 
Uh, and then she said, at one point she says, uh, when you're fighting these enemies, yeah, if you do a certain certain type of move, uh, she says, flock off or something, yeah, which is what, you know, um, Dante says to Griffin, who's a boss in DMC, the original DMC, says, flock off for the face so you can come down here and find out the hard way. And so they, they have all these callbacks, you know, and these references to Hideki Kamiya kind of uh, games that he's been involved with and games that he loves. Like RE4, he obviously fucking loves Resident Evil 4, and so... He references it in Bayonetta, and that's all cool stuff. I ain't got a problem with that. Uh, the games, it's, it's, a, it's such a weird love-hate relationship with this game. So, instead of uh, a devil hunter like Dante, you know, half demon, half human, we get a witch. And I don't find witches that interesting, okay? I don't really think that Bayonetta's design, as hot as she looks, is that great like I, I don't know like i'm not like weebing over over her do you know what i mean i'm not some weeb who's like oh i love the anime it's so strong in her design and nah i'm not i'm not really a weeb weeb myself I'm not weebu type geese like um so i prefer when things aren't thrown in your face like we made her to satisfy the basic male instincts like oh woman big titties fit face nice ass you know, and her hair fucking creates her costume and then it she strips, basically. She strip teases when she's doing special moves. It's just corny. It's over the top, you know. It's, it's too much, in my opinion. So, that's where I stand with that. You get Jill in Revelation. She's got a nice ass and you can fucking play as her. And, you know what I mean? She's just... She looks fit. Yeah, but they don't, like, center in on how fit she'd be looking. You know, she's still a badass going around, like, the uh, Zenobia, the Queen Zenobia, and taking out monsters and stuff. That's the sort of stuff I like, where it's sort of downplayed. Yeah, she's fit, she looks good, but they're not making it a big fucking deal. And I know Metal Gear does that. I know Metal Gear in the past has done this with female characters and stuff. I do get that. And yeah, Kojima, you know, Koji can be fucking corny as well. Like, he, he can do things where he centers in on, you know, a uh, female's breasts and things like that. He did it in, in Phantom Pain even. But uh, Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear Solid 1... And even Metal Gear 2 never really said it too heavily. Okay, Metal Gear 2 did. You can <laughs> you can kiss posters of, of Japanese models. But Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear Solid 1, that kind of just started off being very, very serious and not really doing too much of that stuff. It was more like, okay, Snake's being a pervert type of thing. But with this, it's literally like, you know, base desires from, from a male fan base like over this character. It's a bit weeby, like I said. It's a bit weeboo-ish. Nah, I don't really go for stuff like that. So, um, Bayonetta as a character, eh, she's alright. I like the fact she's British, she's got a British accent, I think that's cool. But people have said she sounds like she's like 50 years old, she's smoked about fucking 20 a day. And I would agree with that, like she, she doesn't really have that sexy voice, I've got to be honest with you. Um, but I think it's cool that she's British. It's different to have like a witch as your main character and stuff. I thought that was interesting and one that like fires guns from her legs and her you know, hands. Uh, but it's stuff like that that I just don't gel with and I don't like. I think it's too too much. Like she's got guns on her legs, you know, and she can fire guns from her hands. And the guns don't feel like they have any real impact, any real kick. Like even Dante's guns, Ebony and Ivory. When you shot them, you, you were thinking, geez, they got a kick and the bullets must be fucking huge that they fire. Uh, with these, they just, they don't have that kick. They don't have that sort of, because it's not really about that. It's about doing combos with these like guns and it's all very weird. It's very strange. Like this is going to be a very short review compared to my last one. Gameplay. Let's just talk about, let's go for it. I like the gameplay. I think the gameplay is spot on. I think the gameplay is, is extremely fun and perfectly balanced i really do i think the actual game gameplay much like vanquish i think the game moment to moment gameplay is great i like it i really really like the levels i like the mythology behind the the whole story and behind the game itself i think that is really cool stuff uh it's just the corny ass ridiculous stuff in the game that really it ends up souring my my tastes of the game that's that's the problem we have uh, it's very inconsistent like it jumps all over the place in terms of story and that wouldn't bother me because loads of animes do that loads of there's films that have done that that have been successful there's loads of games that do that but um it's just jarring when everything else um it's not hitting it for me 
that's what it comes down to. It really comes down to personal preference with this game. It's just it doesn't hit it for me. And and I and I've played it multiple times because there's things like I said that really resonate with me. The levels are beautifully designed. I fucking love the level design and stuff in this game. I really do. Like it reminds me of of where Devil May Cry was kind of going with it, and then this goes further. Yeah, like it. You know, I think it's interesting that you fight angels instead of demons and stuff. Like it's definitely. It's weird. It's like it, it's a companion piece to Devil May Cry. You know, it could it could be in the same world as DMC. They could cross over as characters. It wouldn't be out of place and wouldn't be weird. Um, and it has some complex things in it, like complex story story elements and stuff. Like she, you know, when she's uh, I can't remember now, but she she can go through between purgatory and then the real world. Uh, it doesn't take place in like a like a world like ours it's like an alternate universe type of thing um but yeah when she like can go through between purgatory and and earth or you know the real world um when she's in purgatory like everybody's like a shadow and then if people are in the real world and they they sort of see her she's like a shadow it's it's weird shit like that but it's quite complex and i, I find it quite interesting <laughs> Um, the character herself is just, I don't know man, she, she starts off really cool, you're like, ah, oh, she's alright, and then she starts to just, just irritate me, that's the thing, she starts to irritate the fuck out of me. This is a very Japanese styled anime influenced action game that is overly sexualized, has some weird moments in it that were a little bit pedophilic, I'm not gonna lie to you. You're probably thinking, if you play this game you like, you're probably thinking, what's he talking about? You're also probably thinking, what's wrong with a character being, you know, sexual and, and you know, being a fantasy for men and all this. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, Jill Valentine in Resident Evil Revelations, she's hot. But they're not throwing it in your face going, look how hot she is. It's corny. That's the only word I can use, it's corny. And I have a friend who shares the exact same uh, opinions, you know, that I do on this game. And we, we watch anime, I watch anime, I watch mangas, okay? Or, or manga films, you know, I have in the past when manga was producing films. And uh, you either like an anime or you don't. That's just, that's just it. And with this, it's, it's that sort of thing. Like, he just went full on. He went all out and was like, I'm gonna make something that is crazy as fuck and it's proper Japanese and, and all this other stuff. Um, the the stuff that I said that's a bit paedophilic. There's a bit where she shoots this cherub statue in the dick. I thought that was a bit fucking weird. I know it's not like a real human being and an actual child. But it's still fucking weird. Okay. Um, and then uh, later on. There's a child you meet in the game. I don't want to ruin too much of the story. But one of the, the antagonists in this game. Has put lipstick on the kid. And then is like rubbing her lips with his finger. That shit's fucking weird, man. I don't care who you wanna, what you want to say. Is oh, it's just Japanese being Japanese? No, it's fucking weird. And Hideki Kamiya, I was a bit like, dude, I respected you a lot, but stuff like that, nah. And the fact that the game's super weird as it is, uh, and there are loads of other things that just sour my, you know, my taste of the game. Uh, the fact that it's, it's weird to begin with, and there's stuff that I hate about it. It, it didn't help matters, let's just say that. Maybe I'm reading too much into that, I don't know, but I personally thought it was just, it went a bit too far. And it's stuff that I hadn't noticed before when I played the game, and then I noticed this time, which I was a bit like, Ugh. you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's too weird for its own good. That's the problem. It's too, like, zany and crazy and, you know, there's never, like, a serious moment here and there. Like I said, DMC handled it so much better. Uh, and so does like Vanquish, you know, it has moments of of co uh, comedic sort of touches in there, but it's um, it's used sparingly and just right. Uh, with this, it's just zany constantly from start to finish. Uh, even the enemy names I fucking hate, they sound childish, they sound stupid. The game plays at least incredibly, like it's such a fun game to play, that's why it sucks that I can't get behind the art style and everything else. Um, it plays incredibly. It's a really, really competent hack and slash. Like, really competent. It moves fluid. It moves fast. Yeah, but this is the thing. Platinum Games then went on to create uh, Near Auto Automata, okay? And that is similar to Bayonetta, but it's just way better. 
it's way better and I love it way more than, than Bayonetta. Like it, Bayonetta could never impress me like that game did. Um, Bayonetta in contrast, yeah, it came out before and, you know, it was platinum kind of uh, testing the waters and, and, you know, and seeing how they could maybe make something that was like a uh, spiritual successor to Devil May Cry when really Devil May Cry didn't need a spiritual successor because Dante's Awakening had come out by then and it was amazing and blew everybody away. Um, but Bayonetta, gameplay wise, really, really cool. Boss battles, eh, you could you could take them. I've got to be honest, take them or leave them. They're not that great. You fight very similar looking bosses. They're all like stone statue type, uh, deity type things, and you just hack hack them to bits and then you kill them. And yeah, there's a there's some things that break up the action. Like your uh, surfboarding at one point, you've got to take out the legs of one of these bosses and I guess that tried to switch things up but it just I didn't didn't gravitate towards it um and then you get moments that break up the action like a space harrier uh style gameplay segment it's obviously a nod to space harrier um yeah it weren't that great it wasn't that impressive I, I had to keep sort of dodging the enemies like missiles and stuff which got really boring and was giving me motion sickness i've got to be honest because the it does a, a barrel roll style thing um but unlike Star Fox, where the screen just stays in position in this it fucking actually barrel rolls the whole screen so it started giving me a bit of like motion sickness and yeah and i just thought i'm just constantly dodging the the enemy attacks and they 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 go on for way too long and they're boring that's the thing like you're riding a motorcycle uh during this chapter route 66 666 sorry roots it's supposed to be route 66 but it's 666 yeah because of the angels and hell and stuff like that and um yeah it's good at first you're like right this is this is all right this is cool and then it outstays its welcome and it goes on way too long and these sections go on way too fucking long and even if you're a massive fan of this game you can't deny it. you gotta agree with me those sections really slow the game down a little bit uh, but then there's cool stuff before that where you're fighting on top of, of cars and things, you know, and it reminded me of Uncharted. But Uncharted had already done that. Uncharted 2 had already done that sort of stuff. So, you know, and they continued it for the, the sequels. So I wasn't that impressed by it. But, you know, that was an alright segment of the game. Uh, gameplay, moment to moment gameplay is literally uh, hack and slash. You know, it's, it's Devil May Cry on steroids. It reminds me a lot of Nier Automata, although that game obviously came out after Bayonetta. It's, you know, it's hack and slash done right, um, but it's done before. It's been done before. I guess the same argument could be aimed at Vanquish. It's a third-person shooter over the shoulder, but I don't know. I find the gameplay to be more unique in Vanquish than it is in Bayonetta. There's some unique things, definitely, like the whole, you know, having guns equipped on your legs to firing them using them almost like boxing gloves and kicking with the guns so you also shoot the guns and you can do stuff like hold the button down it's a bit like the ifrit gloves in devil may cry you hold it down charge up the shot you know or in this case you shoot the enemy then you can do carry on the combo so it's it's a bit like that gameplay from dmc with the ifrit gloves that's what bayonetta is but you can just do it you know straight out of the gate um, you get a katana at one point and I ended up not even bothering it's very unbalanced in that way where you do get to buy weapons and things um, but you end up never having the money to do that like I played it on normal and I had to buy a lot of like health um, items and we'll get to that after this but what I'm essentially saying is I bought the katana and that's all I used with the you know the the guns that you can you there's another set of guns that you can buy um but i i pretty much just used the katana and that was it and it got me through the whole game um yeah health items okay so in the game it don't make it if you pulled off stylish moves during combat and stuff uh and you you know you were doing well and getting good scores uh they reward you with or reward you sorry tongue tied there they reward you with green orbs so it tops up your health bennett does this but um, even on normal, it's not the same as DMC on normal. DMC on normal, it still gives you those health orbs if you do really, really well in combat and, and you're stylish. Uh, in Bayonetta, the only time that I 
I think I got some green orbs is when I pulled off the execution moves. So Bayonetta can pull off execution moves. It's like basically instant death moves, yeah, fatalities. And uh, ranges from stuff like her sticking an angel's head in a guillotine and it chopping its head off to, you know, using your, your beast forms and stuff uh, that she can use to, to punch like a boss. And if you do well and you actually like QTE tap that button quick enough um, and you, you it basically goes around this circle and you, you get the last sort of point on the circle. Uh, it's hard to explain, but yeah. You basically tap the button fast enough and you get the top score. You're rewarded with like some green orbs. That's the only time I, other than a few moments, that I found I got green orbs. So you end up with not a lot of health. Like during boss battles, it was non-existent from what I could tell. So you end up with, with your character just the fucking health is, is, has dropped like you don't ever get any health and so you end up spending your money on like health items um i don't know on easy but on normal that i was playing this game on it was really expensive to buy like moves and buy weapons and things like that so i never got to experience the ice skates which i think i got you know previously when i played the game previously on the ps3 because i owned a digital copy of that uh i sold my original copy no, it came free. When when the PlayStation 3 got hacked, PSN got hacked, they gave away some free games. I think Bayonetta was, was one of them along with Infamous. Or I bought it for like £6 or something just because I wanted to, to play it after I watched the anime, which was a pile of trash. So I was like, I want to play the game again. Still didn't like it. Um, like I said, I played this game like five times, at least. At least five times. And I, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, so I don't know about... Like easy, but I think uh, I got the ice skates previously, and I did get to like play with them, but they weren't that great, weren't that amazing. So I ended up just having a katana, second set of guns, and that was it. And it got me through the whole game. And then I bought uh, with my points. I just used them on on health items. Uh, the characters are just I don't know, man. Enzo don't really like him as a character. Rodan's cool, but he's barely in it really. He's like the merchant of this game. Jean is basically Bayonetta, but blonde. That's essentially what she is. And a lot of the bad guys and stuff, they are kind of weird. I do like the fact that the boss is talking a different language and quite, you know, quite weird. Uh, the whole game's weird. The little girl's irritating. At times, she doesn't even sound like she's uh, she's British. She's supposed to have a British accent, but she just sounds weird. Sounds like an American trying to pull off a British accent. And, and Luca, he's just a goofy fucking sidekick character. That's it. So... Yeah, story is story is a, a bit of a mess. Story is a bit of a mess, um, and I don't like if the game is good. And I and you know, there's been a countless amount of uh, Resident Evil titles that have had stupid ass stories. Resident Evil Zero, Code Veronica has been crazy. Maybe not stupid, but it was you know very convoluted. But you can kind of get into that, and when you replay the games, you understand it, and you, the story kind of. It grows on you. Do you know what I mean? And, and you you kind of uh, pick out the parts and, and pieces of the story and then fit it all together. When a game is like that, it doesn't have a straightforward story, you know, from A to B sort of thing. It, it starts to to branch out. Bayonetta story is like that, where if I really gave a damn about the game and the character and the, the lore and the, you know the universe they've created, uh, I would be able to to get on board the story a bit more. But as it is from someone who's not really invested. In that world, the story just is a mess to me. It's, you know, it's a mess. Um, so yeah, the music of Bayonetta is cheesy crap. It's got remixes of Fly Me to the Moon, you know, uh, and just other other remixes. And um, yeah, it's a far cry from Devil May Cry's metal slash dance soundtrack that was so fucking badass or something like doom you know mick gordon's doom soundtrack uh this is just fly me to the moon da -da -da. like what <laughs> Do you know what I mean? i'm sitting there like what <laughs> it's not getting my blood pumping like you go from vanquish has got this really fucking just techno dance soundtrack here yeah? just blowing off robot heads and shit left right and center you know slow mowing and uh bayonet is like <laughs> These old 1950 songs that just, eh, like, nah, it's not doing it for me. So, um, not doing it for me, boss. Like, so, uh, yeah, it's creative, it's unique, 
but uh, I don't know. It could have had a mixture of that or something. Just I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It just it's cheesy. It's cheesy rubbish. This game is cheesy in general, and you're either gonna like the cheese or you're not. And unfortunately, I don't. And I, I'm not. I love Shadows of the Dam. This is coming from someone who who thinks that Lollipop Chainsaw and Shadows of the Damned are cult classics and very underrated games uh, from Suda Fifty One. So. It's not like I don't like a bit of cheese and a bit of, silly, bit of silliness. Resident Evil 4 is very silly at times, very cheesy. Uh, tons of tons of games, like Ninja Gaiden I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, Nier Automata, you know, has serious, very serious story, very serious characters and moments, but has a bit of cheese and silliness. Um, I try to think, what was the other one? Metal Gear Solid, of course. Huge Metal Gear Solid fan, you know. Super cheesy, super ridiculous. Uh, uh, at many points during, you know, many stories within many Metal Gear games there is some cheese there's a lot of cheese and a lot of silliness but uh but yeah this just didn't do it for me this didn't do it for me unfortunately like um it just when something's silly and cheesy and you don't like it you end up being like yeah that that sucks that's crap the best way I could I could put into feelings how I feel about this game me personally this is my review and my personal take on it is it's cringy and it's childish and I feel like Hideki Kimia has that that part of his brain where he's a fucking child and uh, DMC you know Resident Evil 2 he was reined in and that part of that that part of his brain was blocked off you know he held back and then with Bayonet he was like okay now I'm gonna unleash you know <laughs> full force bing like now I'm gonna unleash fucking boobies and hair suits <laughs> bad language the lot yeah like i'm i'm gonna go ham on this shit like this is what i really want to make and for me i was like nah like i like when you're reined in a bit and you you hold off a little bit and that part of your brain ain't accessed mate like it's not where it's at for me boss like yeah uh so you know it was literally like the thing in his brain just went boobies and like that was it because like, i'm make a game with a witch that's got big tits nice ass and a hair suit and it comes off she strips when she does her special moves and shit does like weird pole dancing moves and pff, fucking hell so look <laughs> that's why i don't like it okay because it's cringy and it's silly and it's it's stupid and uh and it doesn't have a charm unfortunately other than like i said the level designs and stuff and uh graphically it's, it's a good looker you know not as good as vanquish but it's not a bad looker um yeah like there's not much else that really draws me into it that's the thing combat's great fun it is but there's other games that are just as fun ninja gaiden metal gear rising near automata devil may cry you know the list goes on and they don't ha there's a lot of hack and slash games that that still gel with me I think oh this isn't for me you know i get on board and i get engrossed in the the universe and the, the law that they're creating so bayonet is just not that type of game unfortunately for me for me personally you know it's one that has been praised ad infinitum people love it you know and i'm probably going to sound like a crazy man when making this review um and people are probably going to come at me and say oh the fuck could you not like this game and stuff and yeah it's it, sorry dudes like some games just don't gel with people i can see how good it is gameplay wise and and you know um level designs and enemy designs are, are cool i actually quite like the enemy designs i think the angels are really cool and there's loads of enemy designs in it that are, are pretty cool but you know uh, they remind me of some some enemies that you'd see in devil may cry and stuff so that's uh you know like it's not really stuff like that it's more just the, the, the cheesy cheesiness of it and the silliness and yeah the campiness of it like I don't gel with and just remember this is coming from someone that, that absolutely loves evil dead 2 and army of darkness i think evil dead 2 is one of the best horror comedies ever made up there with Shaun of the dead so i like camp i like cheesy i like silly but yeah this this sort of camp cheese and silliness nah it didn't, it didn't do it for me so big shame uh i'm gonna end it there i had to talk about bayonetta if i'm talking about vanquish because it comes with the bundle and the pack uh, otherwise I wouldn't have talked about it I wouldn't have ever reviewed this game because I'm not going to really review a game that I just don't like or gel with but because it's on you know it's in the bundle and I did play through it and finish it because why not you know and tried to see maybe I'll like it this time nah unfortunately I just didn't so I don't know it's not a completely bad game like and I can see 
uh, why people love it and why they they like the character so much and why it's appealing to to people. So I would I'm never going to trash this game and shit on it uh, for that reason. I would score this game a six out of ten. I would give it a six out of ten. Some of you out there might give it a nine out of ten, an eight out of ten, even a ten out of ten platinum status. But me personally, yeah, I I am going to give it a six because that's my personal score. But I can also understand why people like it. It's just not for me. I'll stick to my God of Wars, Ninja Gaidens, Devil May Cries, Metal Gear Risings, etc., etc. Near Automatas. There's plenty of hack and slash games out there for me. You know, I love DMC Fire Force. It's a great addition to the to the series. Probably my favourite Devil May Cry game, which is saying a lot because I have a, a massive high regard for uh, Dante's Awakening and the original DMC. Uh, and I like half of four, and the other half sucks. But um, but yeah, there's plenty of hack and slash games out there, and there there always will be. Uh, Bloodborne's another one that does things a little bit differently. Right? So yeah, there's plenty out there that I absolutely love and I own, and I can go back to and play. So just because one didn't hit it for me and still hasn't over the years I've played it, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's just my personal preference and how I feel about it. So you know, I'm not saying you guys are in the wrong for liking a game like this. I think. I can see why it has his, his benefactors and why it has a fan base that it does. But me personally, sorry, didn't gel with me. Anyway, that's my Vanquish and Bayonetta uh, 10th anniversary PS4 collection review. Try saying that 10 times. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, I'm going to get some dislikes with the Bayonetta review. I know this, uh, but hopefully you guys, you know, enjoyed the video. Either if you give me a dislike or a like, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, and let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Do you like them both? Is there one that you like better than the other? What are, uh, why am I nuts for not liking Bayonetta? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, so yeah, until next time, I've been System Check 66. It wasn't really a rapid fire review, was it? <laughs> I'm out of here anyway. Take it easy. Peace.